I saw an article where the writer talked about how he found a stat that gives him a lot of hope for Rocky Asin to truly develop and become that really good corner they hope he can be. The issue with me is that that exact stat is the same reason I have some worries about Rocky Asin. Here's the stat and let me explain exactly what I mean by worries and all of that stuff. So this is his splits from his PFF grade versus man and versus zone coverage for the last three years. This is, you know, his entire career. He's played three seasons now at roughly around 500 or 600 snaps per season. At that top part, so in 2021, you see his man and his zone splits. So his pa his PFF grade uh, when he was in man was amazing. It was eighth best in football. The rank is, you know, that's where you rank in the NFL. Zone, 74th 71st, excuse me, in football, which isn't great, but it's out of a little bit under 200 eligible corners, so that's not horrible either. Like, a 67.3 grade uh, against zone, like, that's solid, but clearly the man coverage grade was where he thrived last year. This is that stat that many people could be excited about. Hey, top 10 in man coverage. Man coverage, that's typically where we view a corner's, you know, most difficult stuff to be when you're in man coverage. However, man coverage is a stat that really fluctuates year in and year out. And I think the reason why is there's just so many different variables when you're playing in man coverage. Do you have safety help behind you? Who are you going up against? How good of a move did they make? It's so dependent on your surrounding things and zone coverage is a lot less dependent on everything else because it tends to be pretty similar play by play whereas man coverage can just vary so much play in and play out and you can see this by reading the rest of the chart so in 2020 you see that a pretty massive jump in both categories in fairness it wasn't just man coverage i mean man coverage was clearly a lot worse a 28.2 grade which was 169th in football zone coverage was also worse as well this was his worst season but you know 122 54 or excuse me 57.4 that's, you know, basically 10 points lower in zone coverage, whereas it was a massive jump over 50 points lower in man coverage. The final year, 2019, that was his rookie season, you see that the zone, pretty similar to 2021, 65.3. So it seems like that's kind of his range in zone coverage, you know, 55 to 65 around there. I think it's fair to kind of expect him to be, we'll say you, it's fair to expect him to be somewhere around a 60 to 65 uh, PFF grade in zone. Again, some people might look at this and say, well, he was just bad at man coverage for his first two years and figured it out in year three. But the history of the NFL shows that guys who have this kind of, you know, statistics, typically the man coverage falls down, whereas the zone coverage will stay about the same. So what does all that mean? Does it mean that he's a bad player? Well, no, not at all. I mean, for one, it is still better to have good man coverage than bad man coverage. Like that's still, you'd you know, I think that there's a lot of luck that goes into it, but there still is some skill. So the fact that he was able to reach high heights there, it's promising. Although again, uh, you look at the top 10 list, it's not exactly like the most dominant corners in man, whereas in zone, it typically is the most dominant corners. But still, it's it's something you'd, you'd rather have him be good at that than not good at that. And also like, hey, in zone coverage, being the 71st best corner in football, there's value in that. That doesn't make you a worthless player. That means you are, you know, a starting caliber corner in the NFL. So there is totally value in that. But that's kind of how I view these numbers. And now let's do what we always have to do, which is, you know, look at the data, look at the statistics and try to get a good understanding of what the statistics mean, but also watch tape. And I still stand by no better way to evaluate a player than watching film. So let's watch some film. So first, let's look at a play like this. So this is zone coverage. And this is kind of what I mean, it's probably what the Raiders are going to do a lot of. It's what they've been doing a lot of in previous years, although it is a new regime. I still think there's a very good chance we'll at least see a decent amount of zone. Could be some man, too. I, I really don't know what they're going to do. But if they are going to do zone, uh, this is a play that, you know, could be a good example. Where one of the things about Rocky Sin is that not the uh, fastest corner. He was he ran a 4-5-1, which is definitely on the low side for corners, and to me, that's a big, big red flag. I like corners who can break 4-5, because again, I look at trends, and the trends say that if you don't break 4-5, uh, your chances of succeeding are relatively small. This is kind of an example of how that can work, where you see where he is on the screen, he is covering the bottom section of the field, and you see the route that he's gonna be covering, it's gonna kind of cut in a little. 
Look at how the receiver gets inside leverage, and then when he cuts over the middle, there is just a little bit of separation. And this is why it's just difficult for a bit of a slower corner to really thrive in the NFL, is you kind of have to have perfect footwork to keep up with guys. Because at this point, you know, if you're a fast corner, you can make up this ground. If you're not, you can't. So that's just, again, I'm going to, I promise you, I am going to give you some positives about Rocky Asin. He's not a trash corner or anything like that. There's stuff that's good about him, but he just, he has his difficulties that he has to deal with. Something like this is a really good example of what he can do well. Where a lot of times when people think speedy corners or lack thereof, like they think a big issue is stuff like this. It's a go route on the outside. Rocky Asin is going to be covering that go route. He is in zone coverage here, but basically he's going to be deep. He is going to cover this route. But look at how when this play begins, Yasin is able to bail very well. And at this point, there isn't a ton of separation. And this is the thing with Yasin is he's, again, I talk about that 4-5 mark kind of being the benchmark. He was right there. I mean, he was 4-5-1. So that's certainly in the gray area of he might actually be fast enough to make it work uh, or might not. You know, he's right right on the cusp, basically. And really what he is fast enough for is he's not going to get burned deep just because he's slow. He's not like going to have like a Kevin King versus Scotty Miller moment. As long as he can make sure that he gets his footwork properly and reads the play correctly and gets himself in position, he will be fine. And he does a pretty good job of that. So like I'm saying, he's not a bad player by any means. And as you see, he finishes off this part of the route very well on top of that. So these are the positives with someone like Yasin is that he can do this with relative consistency and as long as you're not expecting him to come out and be this true number one corner which I don't believe they're thinking he's going to be uh, and you kind of keep him as kind of really I, I like him best as maybe a good rotational piece who can be a number two guy uh, and if that's what you're using him for I think he has some value now this is an issue with someone like Yasin uh, is he, this kind of thing can burn him where it's zone coverage. I again in the box, that's where Yasin is, and also where the receiver who's uh, who Yasin is covering is. And watch what happens. Look at how when this play begins, you see how Yasin has to really he has to bail pretty heavily because if it's a go route, he has to make sure he's in position. And this is what, what I mean when I say he can get beat a little bit easier than maybe some other corners could. Uh, that's just the reality of the situation. Watch the receiver stops, Yasin gets too far deep and there is going to be a completion, and you get a decent chunk play, get a first down there. So, again, that can happen. That's a very real thing that can be accomplished. So this is why I kind of, I do have questions, perhaps just about his ceiling in general. Something like this as well is another example of kind of what I'm talking about. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a play action, and basically it's going to turn into a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the route you see on the screen, and Yasin is, you know, the guy who's covering him. Look at how, right when this play begins, again, receiver doing a good job of kind of faking out Yasin, faking as though he's going to go to the right, so Yasin's back is turned. Uh, he's facing the sideline towards the top of the screen, whereas the receiver's going to run over the middle. Receiver cuts back in, is able to make a catch and pick up a decent amount of yards there, so uh, gets the first down, all that stuff. Actually, the ball ended up coming out, and Rocky Sin recovered it, so that's nice. But, uh, you know, as a whole, this is not, it, it's not ideal. But again, there's stuff he can do well. He's just not a star corner. He's not someone who's going to get burned every game, and he's not going to lose you any games. I, I like having him on your team. I think there's value there. But from the Colts' perspective, I can kind of understand why they might feel like this is a bit of a, a sell-high move, getting rid of Yasin now, and, you know, maybe even buying low on Yannick Ngakwe, who didn't have a great season, whereas for the Raiders, they're kind of saying, like, eh, if this is what you are, like, there's still value in that. We still like this kind of player, so we'll still keep you, and then we'll get rid of someone who wasn't working with us. So, I get both sides, I get both uh, ideas, and I'm interested to see which one ends up playing out, but that's my thought on Rocky Asin. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.